Now over uh, two dozen more Palestinians become homeless as Israeli regime forces them to leave their ancestral homes in occupied East Al-Quds. A family of 27 in the Silwan neighborhood has been targeted this time. They are pressed by regime officials to leave and demolish their own homes. Many of those left homeless include children and the elderly. On Tuesday, Israeli forces bulldozed the remains of a Palestinian house in the same neighborhood. Some of the Palestinians whose homes are subject to demolitions raise them by their own hands to avoid further penalties. The Israeli regime regularly flattens Palestinian homes and structures in Al-Quds under the pretext they lack building permits, but Palestinians and rights groups say moves are only aimed at grabbing more Palestinian land to expand uh, Israeli settlements, which are all illegal under international law. Joining us now for the program is Rabab Abuladi, a senior scholar at and director at Arab and Muslim Ethnicities and Diaspora Studies at San Francisco, and uh, Firaz al Naji, manager at Canadian Defenders for Human Rights, joining us from Ottawa, Ontario. Hello, and I'd like to welcome you both to the program. We'll start with you, Dr. Abdul Hadi. Um, your thoughts on we know that this is a, a serious a human rights uh, violation, it's a serious concern not just for Palestinians, but for anyone that's interested in peace and occupied territories. Why do the Palestinians have to endure this kind of treatment? I mean, we know they, they, they deal with all kinds of marginalization by the Israeli regime, but having their own homes demolished when the regime does not give them building permits, what are they, what are they to do? Well, the only thing that they can do is resist and refuse Israeli attempts that are trying to completely erase Palestine and Palestinian existence and the will of the Palestinian people. They, it is a very sad uh, situation. It's a crime against humanity, and let's call it what it is. It's a crime against humanity. It's a collective punishment, and it is a project of settler colonial regime that tries to erase the indigenous people of the land in order to replace them with immigrants from all over the world and claim that the land is not theirs. The, the reality of the matter is that Palestinians have been enduring this treatment for a very long time. Actually, even Palestinians who are citizens of the state of Israel themselves are also oftentimes forced to raise their own homes. It costs, it, it costs at least $150,000 to raise the home. And then they also sometimes have to pay for the Israeli helicopters and the dogs that come along with the Israeli military establishment to destroy Palestinian homes. This is nothing more than it is a crime against humanity. It's a violation of human rights. It's actually making people homeless in their own homes. And what Israel is trying to do by this is to actually empty Palestine, Jerusalem from Palestinians, Judaize Jerusalem, take it over, and claim that it is the eternal capital of Israel. This has failed again and again by the resistance of the people in Silwan, by resistance of people in Sheikh Jarrah, by the resistance of the Palestinians in the old city of Jerusalem, by the Murabitat women who are staying there, guarding the Aqsa Mosque, by the majority of the Palestinian people from all religious uh, backgrounds who are speaking up against it, and first and foremost, actually, by the resistance of the Palestinians themselves to this. But it does not make it any less inhumane. It does not make it any less a violation of human rights. And the whole world should be outraged by these continued attempts by Israel to act as nothing more like the apartheid and colonial regime. Thank you, Doctor. And Firaz, I'd like to welcome you to the program. Hope you're safe and doing well out there in Ontario. Firaz, what do you call it when a regime takes your land by force, makes you demolish your own home there, 27 families, children and the elderly involved, you know, driven out in the cold, uh, you know, pre-winter cold out here in the Middle East. I don't know if uh, you're familiar, but I don't know if, well, actually you're in Canada, so I'm sure you're familiar with the cold. But to make a long story short, what do you call it? What do you call it when they take your land, then they make you demolish your own home so you don't have to pay for them to do it for you and leave you out in the cold? What is that called, uh, Firas? Yes, uh, regards to perceived staff and all viewers. I mean, uh, like the sister said, uh, this is a crime against humanity. And uh, we're all witnessing this, you know, uh, we're lucky to be in, in, in an era where, uh, you know, there is uh, clear proof and we have all this technology where people can capture these things, you know, with the videos, with the video cameras, with the you know, um, uh, sophisticated phones. And uh, this uh, clarifies to the world that these crimes 
you know, should not, you know, should not have people uh, sitting around watching these crimes without doing something about it. Um, and we hold more, more accountable, obviously, uh, the nations that uh, watching all these crimes accumulate and continuous crimes, you know, uh, the countless, uh, uh, you know, violations of international law, uh, countless violations, attacks on, uh, you know, civilians all day and night, like you said, taking over people's homes and uh, also enforcing them to demolish their own homes and suffer and watch, you know, the children have to watch the place they were raised in or the seniors have to watch the place where they grew their olive trees outside and they were eating outside in the, in the, in the backyard and enjoying their home for many years. And this is part of their history and a part of their, uh, they thought it was part of their future and all of a sudden their future is no more home. So, um, you know, why preach about human rights? All these, all these countries that support the Zionist regime and they're the same ones that sit around and, and, and try to condemn other countries and other places in the world. Um, and leave Israel to just keep committing all these crimes without holding them accountable. We never hear anything about sanctions against Israel. Um, we only hear them, uh, a lot of countries, trying to stop people uh, uh, that are, for instance, resisting by boycotting Israeli product and uh, calling this anti Semitic or trying to say that these people are against a certain way. They're just, uh, you know, selectively choosing uh, this regime as if this regime. Uh, innocent and uh, you know and uh, you just leave it alone so pretty much it's uh, uh, we, we got to hold accountable honestly a lot of these Western governments because they have a big uh, hand in this and they're watching these crimes and, and they see and the crimes and don't do nothing about it in the United Nations all these assemblies uh, when have they ever adopted any strict penalties against Israel Israel thinks that they have a green light to commit every crime and they know they're gonna get away with it and uh, you know, merely we will get a condemnation here and there. Um, you know, a few, a few, a few politicians speaking out. But other Fiyaz, than that, we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to come yes. back to you. Let me just uh, really uh, go back to uh, Dr. Abdul Hadi. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. If you can, in, in just a minute, if you could wrap it up for us, uh, I'm going to get your final thoughts and then go back to Firas to get his. You mentioned resistance, doctor, but you very well know the West has used a lot of its power influence along with the Israeli lobby to try to put all the resistance movements on a terror list and basically even even their uh, political arms to try to, in essence, uh, quiet them and uh, push them into submission where they cannot help the Palestinians. A lot of Palestinians don't feel the Fatah movement does enough for them. And all these people that do get kicked out of their homes, it's usually when uh, the soldiers show up with their guns and their helicopters and their tanks, they're all provided by Washington. And arguably the worst thing that Washington provides that's anti-Palestinian for the Israelis above and beyond the weaponry is the UN veto that always keeps, to Firaz's point, Israelis out of international courts. Your final thoughts, doctor. Yes, I would just say that, first of all, the United Nations and the International Committee is responsible. They're the ones who created the problem for Palestine. It's not the Palestinian problem. It's the problem for the Palestinians. They have an accountability to address it. Secondly, uh, the nations, the Western nations, like the United States, Canada, European Union, who are funding Israel, the United States has given the Iron Dome to Israel, is giving an unlimited amount of military support to allow it to practically go and crush the Palestinians. This is not acceptable. The BDS movement, boycott, divestment, and sanctions must be effective everywhere. And I think part of the problem that Israel is having is that it's unable to uncover, to cover its crimes, and the United States and its allies are unable to cover up what Israel is doing because more and more people around the world are realizing what's going on. They're protesting it. But I also want to stress that the fact that the Palestinians are resisting and staying put on their lands, and every time they destroy a home, people set a tent and sit down and protest and keep read, read, uh, raising their voices very loud for the rest of the world to act on it. It is, it, we don't want it too little too late. We want it That's, yesterday. We want the right. whole international community to be held accountable. We want the United States to be held accountable. We want the European Union, Canada, all these Western countries to be held Dr. accountable. And we want to see more support for the boycott, divestment, and sanctions around the world to hold Israel accountable. Thank you, thank you, doctor. We only have about uh, 45 seconds left. Uh, Firaz, your final thoughts there, bud. Yes, I, I, I agree with the sister and uh, the things that she just brought up. And I think the resistance is very important, and we've seen in Mitni in Ramadan when the attacks happened against and against Al-Aqsa that the Palestinians, uh, you know, have got to a level where they united everywhere, you know what I mean? 
Um, you see in Jerusalem, and you see people in West Bank, and you see people in Haifa, we see people, and we see uh, military uh, resistance from Gaza, uh, and, the, uh, and the unified movement of Palestinians could continue. And, the, and, and also the activists and the people that really care and have consciousness and care about human rights and care about international law and care about sovereignty and care about security and care about peace for the Palestinians should keep continuing to fight in all different ma ways and, and methods. And, and fully, Palestine will be free. And, uh, you know, all those people that support Israel will be humiliated. This is the bottom line. All these politicians in Canada and the U.S. one day will regret what they did by supporting uh, uh, one of the biggest war criminal regimes. And, uh, you know, okay, uh, we're, we're out of time. Regime, yes. Thank you, Firaz, uh, for uh, your input there. Uh, Rabab Abdul Hadi, a senior a scholar at the uh, Director at Arab and Muslim Ethnicities and Diasporas Studies in San Francisco, California. And Mr. Firaz Al Najim, their manager at Canadian Defenders for Human Rights from Ottawa, Ontario, joining us on the program of yours. That's a wrap for the segment of your Press TV's News Review program. Thank you for tuning in, and goodbye for now.